Yeah, hi, can you hand me that nav data behind you, please? It's on the counter, it's right in front of you. Can you just, yeah, hi. Can you just hand me that? Yeah, the nav data, it's a blue cube, it's a glowing cube. Please, right behind you. Fuck's sake. Greetings, fellow interloper. Taylor here. Today, we're going to do a deep dive on one of the tools you use every time you play, yet not a whole lot of attention gets paid to it. I'm going to show you how to make the most of your galaxy map, so if you're a beginning player, this is a must-watch. If you're intermediate or advanced, I bet there's a couple gems in here for you. But just to cover my bases, near the end of the video, I'm going to share something that has saved me hours. So let's pull out the map and take a look at the various points of information it gives you and how it might help you on your journey. So the first thing I generally do on a map is hit my B button on Xbox or circle on PlayStation to unlock my view of the system I'm in. I can now zoom anywhere I want in the galaxy. If you really want to travel fast, you can hold down the right button on the Xbox or R1 on PlayStation. From the default view, the stars are colored according to what the game refers to as their spectral class. As we can see, there are four colors of stars, yellow, green, blue, and red. Each have their own unique characteristics. If you're, say, hunting for paradise planets, it's best to stay with yellow stars. Indium, activated indium, is located on blue stars. Cadmium on red and emerald on green. It's easy to remember these since elements are colored according to their star color. If we take a look in the top left corner, you can see that it shows what galaxy we're in. Here, I'm just kind of bumming around Sudzer Ball, which is galaxy 30. Also, it gives us the distance to the center of the galaxy. As you can see, we're pretty close to the center of this one. If I warp out a little bit, you can see that our number will change and our position in the galaxy will also change. So when we click on a particular system and then expand the view, you can see that we have a lot of information to take a look at. There's the simple stuff at the top, which is the system name and then the region within the galaxy. And then below that we have some smaller yellow numbers. So this is divided into three areas. The first area is how far our selection is from our current location. In this case, it's 325 light years, LY. The second grouping is always a capital letter followed by a number and then sometimes a lowercase letter, not always. So depending on the color of the star system, that will depend on what kind of letter you see to start off. So yellow has F and G, red uses K and M, green uses E, and blue uses O and B. The number you see after the capital letter represents the relative temperature based on a scale of 0 to 9. The lower the number, the hotter the system. It's a little backwards. But do keep in mind these are just guidelines and not hard and fast rules. You can certainly find a paradise planet in a low numbered system. That's kind of why we love this game, for the randomness. Now lastly, there could be a lowercase letter after the number. This represents the oddity that the system has. According to our friends with the No Man's Sky Wiki, there are 11 different lowercase letters representing various oddities. I'll let you take a look here. The type of galaxy that you're in will determine what kinds of letters that you see. So if you're new to the No Man's Sky universe, there are four types of galaxies. Normal, harsh, empty, and lush. These serve as nothing more than just probability labels. In other words, if you're looking for a paradise planet, you're better off looking for one in a lush galaxy than, say, a harsh one. But as much as Hello Games loves being cryptic, they do help us out a little bit here with the next part. If a body of water is present somewhere in the system, they'll just tell you by saying, water. Thanks, HG. The next line will show the dominant race of the system that you're looking at. In this case, we've got a GEX system. On the surface, it may seem very random as to which types of ships are coming in and out of trading posts and space stations, but there's actually a method to this. So long as the system isn't abandoned, there's a pool of 20 different ships available, seven of which will always be shuttles. So that leaves 13 to be divided among fighters, haulers, and explorers. So if you're visiting a GEX system, seven of those will be haulers. Three will be fighters and three will be explorers. 
If you're visiting a Corvax system, you'll have a choice of seven different explorers, three fighters, and three haulers. Lastly is probably everybody's favorite system. The Viking system has seven different fighters, three explorers, and three haulers. So you can see how it would be important to know what the dominant race is of each system if you're looking for a particular type of ship. Now the next line shows the economy of the system. In No Man's Sky, there are seven different economies to make use of, and we're gonna actually circle back to this one. Lastly, there's the conflict level. It's fairly simple. The higher the number, the more conflict to expect. So if you're new and your ship doesn't have a lot of shields, and you just don't feel like dogfighting, then yeah, steer clear of level two, level three. So one of the cool, probably underused features of the maps is that you can actually sort by what you're looking for. So in this case, we're pushing down or up on the D-pad and we're on life form. So now all the stars are color coded according to their dominant race. So red stars are Viking, yellow stars are Gek, and the light blue or cyan color would be Corvax. And the white stars are unchartered, meaning there is no dominant life form. You kind of wonder if there is any arguments among the life forms on who got represented by which color. Hear your names. Mr. Brown, Mr. White, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Blue, Mr. Orange, and Mr. Pink. Why am I Mr. Pink? Next up is the economy filter. Now it's important to know the economy is in reference to what kinds of products are produced there not whether it's a rich or a poor system. In this filter, you'll find seven different colors representing the seven categories of trade goods. This is where things can get a little confusing for the newer player. While there are seven different industries, there are not simply one name used per industry as far as adjectives go. So if we bounce around to various, uh, we'll pick yellow stars, you'll see various names for their economy, but they all share the same icon. This becomes a fun way to actually make money early on in the game for the cost of a few warps to different systems. So let's take a look at how you can make some money early on in the game easily just by buying and selling trade goods in the right spots. So in our system, we're in a tier three, which means we'll have generally five different trade goods that we can buy. Uh, I've got a ton of cash, so I'm just gonna buy out all five of them and I'll show you how that works. We're gonna go ahead and head into the space station now. So I always buy my goods when I'm doing trading at tier three systems, the rich systems. That means uh, you're guaranteed to have five different trade goods to buy. And here we've got five that we can buy at a substantial discount since they are produced locally. So essentially we're gonna buy all five of these. And if you're wondering, well, how do you know where to sell to? If you look closer at each product, you'll see that it tells you what system to go to. So when we read through this, you can see that this has spawned a lucrative trading opportunity and trading is emphasized. So word of caution here, trading is emphasized with the color uh, purple and it doesn't mean that you're looking for purple stars. Actually, it's green would be trading. So I don't know why uh, they decided to emphasize these words with with green and purple when these are extremely misleading. So we're going to pop back into our galaxy map and sort it by economy and find a good system to sell in. Now because we literally bought out all the products here, uh, the system surrounding this one will be the most affected. So what we want to try to do is stay somewhat close and just keep clicking on green uh, systems. Now make sure you're on the economy filter it'll really mess you up if you did not switch your filter and you're looking for green stars. So make sure it's on economy and just scan around for green. Now it seems a lot of these are unchartered, which means, you know, we're, they're not going to have space stations, so they're no good to us. So once we find a good one, we're anything north of 70, 75% is really good. And it looks like we're going to find a 78 percenter. And I think I scan around here a little bit more, but eventually we'll come back to the 78%. So let's head there. We're gonna to go to the trade terminal and sell our stuff. So when you're in the sell portion and you see green percentages, that's a good sign you're in the right system. So here we're gonna be selling them all. And the numbers shook out something like this. We spent nearly 12.5 million on products. Then we found a good system 
And at the end of all this, we sold for almost 18 million. So we made about 5.5, we made 5.43 uh, million on this transaction. And literally just buying and selling to a neighboring system. It's that simple. Now with refining and you know making stasis devices or uh, fusion igniters, you can certainly make a lot more money. There's no doubt about it. This is just super simple and a great technique to use when you're first starting off. But more importantly, it's an awesome way to illustrate how much information's on the galaxy map. So if you'd like to have your own cheat sheet, I'll throw up a handy chart that you can make note of if you're just starting out and would like to make money trading goods between systems. The left hand side is where you're buying the products and on the right is the appropriate system to sell those in. These are color coded to their economy color on the galaxy map. So when you're seeking out the appropriate system, of course, make sure that your filter is on economy. So there's one final tip I wanna share that seems to trip up a lot of players when they reach the center of the galaxy. And that's how to move into the next galaxy. But to illustrate this, we're gonna to have to be close to the center of the galaxy in order to move on. This is where my earlier promise will be fulfilled. If you find yourself hundreds of thousands of miles away from the center, and you don't feel like warping all the way, there is a portal code that will get you there. And as of April 14th, 2021, this portal code still works. It will get you to any center of any galaxy. In fact, I'm testing it in the background, as you can see, in El Cupalos, which is Galaxy 11. All right, so now that I've finished charging the portal, it's time to enter the glyph address. Don't worry, once all 12 glyphs are entered, I'll freeze the frame so you have time to either write it down or just take a screen grab, whatever you want to do. And there we go, guys, the key to any center. Now, I know this is somewhat exploitive, so by all means, if you want to do it the old fashioned way, that is kind of what the game's about. I do respect that. All right, so now that we're through the portal, we should be very close to the center of the galaxy. Let's take a look. Awesome, so we're literally one jump away from the center. So right now is where a lot of people get tripped up when you're just starting out. What you wanna do with your right thumbstick is move it in the direction of the center of the galaxy. And by doing so, you'll actually see the uh, pathway change color from orange to white. So I'll toggle this a couple times just to demonstrate what happens when you move the thumbstick in the direction of the center of the galaxy. So after you point it towards the center, you need to hold it for about five seconds. Then it will trigger the traveling to the center of the galaxy, and then you'll move on to the next galaxy. Make sure your hyperdrive is fully charged or it won't let you go. Also something very important to keep in mind is that traveling from galaxy to galaxy will break all the tech in your exosuit in the general area, not in the technology area. It will also break all the tech in your starship and break all the tech in your multi-tool. So before you switch galaxies, buy a cheap ship and just use that and then just sell it when you're done. Also, make sure and switch to a cheap multi-tool because you can have up to three. Make sure and switch your multi-tool to something you don't ever use and just let that break and then switch back after you're in to the next galaxy. Ooh, oh Nelly, that was a long video. Thanks so much for sticking around, guys. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you appreciate this content. And if you really appreciate the content, check out my Ko-Fi link in my description. It's a great way to show your appreciation to full-time content creators such as myself. Thanks again for watching, guys. This channel is only two months old, and I'm truly humbled at the support I've gotten so far. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.